All right, now we're going to get into a classic example of a ride, but this is a leader's ride. And we're looking at Ben Morris and then Tori once again. Hello and welcome to another zany episode of Nerdy West Coast Swing, the podcast with pixels where the anchors are out of this world and the points don't matter. We are here to help train your eyes so you can learn faster and dance better. I'm Cassie Winter, and normally this is the part where Alicia would elegantly chime in and say, I'm Alicia Martel, and then say who we are and things like that. Um, But she hath no internet! She is attempting to tether to us (laughs) via her phone somewhere in the depths of Texas. So uh, how much we hear from her, I'm not sure. I will do my best to steer us in nerdy directions tonight. Uh, but she will be haunting us from the tethered beyond. Tonight's topic is yes. a pattern. <laughs> See, we're being haunted. <laughs> uh, tonight, our topic is a pattern yeah. deep dive. We're going to be talking about rides in West Coast Swing, both from the perspective of a leader's ride versus a follows ride. And then our last example is why not both dot JPEG? Just just both because Ben and Tori decided to be super extra one time. So we're going to cover that. We're not going to be sharing the videos to watch live tonight uh, like we normally do because we have so many examples to go over. But in the uh, recording on YouTube, I will link all of the original videos in the description box below so you can go and reference the original dances. So without any... Wait, no. I want to do some preamble first. So definition. What is a ride? A ride in West Coast Swing is where one partner is rotating on a single axis. They're not traveling anywhere. Very often they're doing this on one foot. However, there are some examples that we'll look at tonight where it's on both feet and more of a lean, but more often than not, it's on one foot And what makes it a ride is the other partner is connected to the partner rotating and is traveling around the rotating partner at the same rate as the rotating partner's rotation. So without any further ado and consent from our resident nerdy phantom to the screen share. All right. So the first few examples we're going to be looking at tonight are examples of leaders rides. And the first couple are super simple. They're not full 360 rotations. Uh, They're less than that, like a quarter or a half. So this first one from Jordan, I'm just going to hold forward so you can see the whole thing in context. And this is more of a tethered ride. So there is a delay in Tori going around Jordan, but it still has kind of like the bare bones concept of a ride. So Jordan is stepping forward onto his left foot. He's rotating to his right. And once they have achieved a full tether, which means the connection between Jordan's right hand and Tori's left has hit full tension and she has no choice but to travel around him while he rotates, that's when the ride begins. And it ends up being really itty bitty one. It's just so tiny. Yeah. It's really adorable. But the reason I mentioned. I don't know. That... Yes. What? Sorry. I don't know if you mentioned, but uh, for leaders rides, it won't work well if the follows don't have good enough connection. Yes. That is a really important point. And we'll be talking about that at the more complex one. Because like tonight, the whole. Yes goal behind tonight is how the person who is not balanced on one foot so the person that's traveling around the person getting the ride how that person who's traveling can do their best to calibrate and support their partner's rotation so that they can stay on balance and it doesn't matter which role you're in it's whoever's traveling around is the one that needs to do the majority of the calibration yeah so This example was so simple that uh, we'll just move on because we got some really juicy ones tonight. And uh, this next one is (laughs) a really simple example um, that happens a lot. And that's where a leader simply takes out their first triple in a whip. 
and they use the follow's momentum to pivot them around to face the follow. So if we go back to the beginning of this one, so it's a standard opening to a whip, but instead of stepping down onto their left foot on three, the leader remains on their right foot and does a bit of a ronde and using the follows linear momentum to complete their rotation. And it's just a really fun and simple way to add some styling as a leader and kind of get used to the feeling of creating a ride energy for yourself and encouraging the follow to travel while you do it. The main distinction here is this is a, a linear example. The rest of them tonight are all going to be pretty much standard rotational, but this is kind of like a baby step into rides. Um, that's a really simple thing to start trying out in your leading um, if you haven't done it before. So again, it's a standard whip entrance, but you place yourself on count two on your right foot, and then you don't do your three and four triple. You're essentially rotating on your right foot, but you're tethering the follows back with your right hand. So you notice how the connection happens first. They've moved into closed position. Jordan has caught Tori. And because he is now attached to her, it's her momentum that is completing his rotation to his right. And then he essentially steps out of it. All right. Now we're going to get into a classic example of a ride, but this is a leader's ride. And we're looking at Ben Morris and then Tori once again. I just love the like pasa doble arm that he does. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I am here. Yes. Excellent. I literally can't even see anything, but uh, I know exactly what you're talking I know. about. <laughs> we went over these on Tuesday. So you have a general idea of what's happening. Uh-huh. <laughs> so if we think back to the definition that I was using earlier, a ride consists of one partner often being on one foot and rotating around a single axis. So they're not traveling anywhere while the other partner is attached often in closed position, not open. And they're literally just traveling around the same axis at the same speed that the partner in the center of the axis is dancing. And because of the connected nature of rides, it's really important that as few variables as possible get changed for the person who is on one foot because they're more precarious. They're in the eye of the storm, as it were. So the person that is traveling around has the job of calibrating. So let's look at this one a little bit more in detail. So he's entering it from a basic, is this a reverse whip? Yes, it's a reverse whip. He's stepping across on his four, and then he is picking a center axis with his five. And I want to highlight that he is already leading Tori to start uh, traveling around the axis that he is about to start rotating on. So if we go back to the beginning of the whip, she is turning to her left. And then as she is starting to transfer her weight back onto this left foot, if you watch the hand, Ben's right hand on her back is already moving screen left. And so instead of her right foot going straight back in the opposite direction down the slot, like a normal whip would be, her right foot is crossing in front and to the left of her left foot. And so that feeling right there is really important as a leader because you don't want the follow to get the memo that it's a ride when you start doing the ride. You want to give them a prep, as it were, to start calibrating to you and your ride. So they need the information ahead of time. Hello again, Phantom. 
<laughs> so, for those who joined us only recently, Alicia has no internet, so she is our resident phantom this evening, and I I will be speaking to the void on yeah. her behalf. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we have covered, but <laughs> <laughs> so we have covered that. Tori is already starting to travel around what is going to be his center axis for his rotation. And that is not only helping her understand what's going to happen. So it's not coming out of any, just coming out of nowhere for her, but it is also helping him determine where he's actually going to place his right foot right here. Because it's based on the physics of their connection. And he's basically aiming for the center of the circle that she is already traveling around. Because she has gone from here to here. And it's kind of this area. And if we were to extrapolate that... You can see his foot is aiming for more or less the center of that. It's an imperfect drawing because I cannot draw into three-dimensional space. I'm not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> I have no 3D drawing skills. Y'all have seen my horrifying stick figures, but hopefully this uh, sad <laughs> circle gets <laughs> gets my point across. And it's the point across. Yeah. Point across. Um, and then the other thing I want to add is that there's a slight uh, delayed weight transfer to what Ben is doing. So his foot strike is out ahead of his body and it's after the foot strike that he brings his full body over that foot. It's a really subtle detail, uh, but it helps with control to be closer to split weight before moving into a rotation as opposed to being a hundred percent over the foot you're going to rotate on yeah is there anything you want to add to that alicia when it's one of these kinds of turns do you want to try to add something so i'm not alone because <laughs> basically um, I think ben, I... it, ben is doing like a one foot prep where his yeah. uh the foot he's going to rotate on is slightly out ahead of him when it plants mm -hmm. yeah um I mean, just for this in general, you have to make sure that you're kind of both dropping weight down and out. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's like main thing for <laughs> that I can say quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Before pick off again. <laughs> <laughs> Challenging the internet gods to defy us. Uh -huh. <laughs> we will have our episode. <sighs> All right. So um, as Ben completes his weight transfer over his right foot, I want you to notice how he's basically bringing his pelvis forward underneath his head to help counterbalance himself. And he's using his free leg also to counterbalance not only him, but Tori. So one of the things that's really important to understand about the physics of a ride is counterbalance happens not only on the x-axis, not only on the y-axis, but also on the z-axis. So um, this is where I cannot, I cannot draw in three dimensions. Okay, here, we're going to do... One of those, we're in first grade learning how to draw a three-dimensional box. <laughs> so this <laughs> right here is Y. This right here is X. And this one is Z. Oh, no. Where did you go? My drawing died. It hates me. I'm going to do that one more time. <laughs> I accidentally hit a button <laughs> with my the heel of my hand. Anyway, so this is X. This is Y. And this one is Z right, right mm -hmm. here. So when you're thinking of counterbalance, if you're playing um tug of war, it's really just two directions. You're just you're just dealing with X. You're you're both pulling away from that. 
But when you're in a ride, the away energy, the centripetal force can happen in a combination of all of those axes. There can be degrees in Y, X, and Z. And it tends to also arc, which we'll hopefully be able to see later today. But what's happening is this foot is counterbalancing Tori's head weight, I would say. And you can see how as Ben lifted up, she also lifted up. And that's in part because she's attached to his hand. Uh, but she is also having to counter his arm weight and his leg and foot weight on the other side of the equation. So she's not just thinking about getting away, escaping orbit, as it were. Um, there's also some energy up and out in mm -hmm. order to counterbalance this leg because his leg's going to be adding more weight to the equation um, than his arm. And the leg is also very important because it's what adds that spin power. Yeah. Because of the way that it's kind of whipping out and around. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing um, I want to add that is really crucial is when Ben goes to take this angle between his arm and his shoulder and he starts rotating to his right he is making sure that Tori isn't suddenly being accelerated or changed from rotational around him to linear. It's really easy when you're trying to apply power to a rotation in place on one foot to kind of close the shoulder you're rotating towards. And that affects the follow that's attached to you on that side of your body. So if he were to, let me go back further. If as he stepped onto this, if he were to have closed this side of his body around and changed the rate at which his right hand were rotating around the whole circle that she's attached to, that would have interrupted her ability to calibrate to him properly because it would have kind of given her a, a stopping feeling. So it's really important as a leader that when you are giving yourself a ride, and this also applies to follows who want to kind of back lead rides for themselves, that you make sure that you're really clear that you want your partner to be traveling in a circle around you. So the energy that you are giving to them is consistent and circular as opposed to inconsistent, inconsistent with like lines and angles to it. That would be very confusing. Yep. <laughs> I remember um, in the before times, uh, Jordan and Tot came and taught whole like weekend's worth of workshops up here in Portland. And one of the examples they did was actually, funnily enough, it was a version of this that just kept the ride going longer for the leader. Because that's one of the things you can do um, with this whip version where you take out the first triple as a leader. You can set it up so the follow doesn't just do a normal whip that they actually travel around you for as long as you want. And one of the things that kept happening was leaders with their right hand were just leading a plain old whip. And then they were suddenly rotating on one foot and the follow was getting the message really late that something was happening. <laughs> but um, what needs to happen is like with this one, how Ben is through this three and four already indicating to Tori that she's needing to start traveling around him. And so um, it was actually one of those things that uh, no one in the class was like getting that. <laughs> so I even pulled Tot aside. I was like, mm -hmm. they're, they're not getting this. 
Um, and so they they shared it with the class and then everybody was being a lot more successful. It was great. But it's those those little details of timing that make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So we have now looked at the leader examples. So now we're going to look at the follow examples where the follow is the one getting the ride. So when uh, a follow gets a ride, it's either because the leader has led it or it's often possible to back lead it as a follow. And what's nice about that is usually it's because you're already feeling really grounded and stable as a follow. And it's the kind of situation where the leader can choose whether or not to let you just have a free spin or to turn it into a one foot and they're holding your hand uh, and turning you above your head, or they have the opportunity to hold on and go for the ride around you. But I think most of the examples we're going to be looking at tonight are ones that the uh, leader put the follow in. These first few are really simple and it's more of a lean. And the reason why I am calling this a ride is because of how much Jordan is having to calibrate to make sure he doesn't knock Tori off her center while she is kind of leaning precariously um, forward off her axis. So the first thing I want to really highlight is the fact that Jordan from this point on is starting to travel screen left, but that doesn't mean he's not counterbalancing her. So her arms are stretched out kind of past a normal point for a frame. Um, she's really stretched across her chest and she's leaning forward. And it's really important that her frame becomes a constant. And that is what allows her to feel more stable. So as a, as a leader, he is trying to maintain the integrity of her frame through this as much as possible. So you can see that one of the things that Jordan is doing is he is going around her. He's not going straight past her. If he were to go straight past her, she would probably fall forward a little bit because of how much she is depending on him. And then the other thing, because I would be remiss if I didn't share it at all, a very standard footwork for the person who is traveling around the partner getting the ride is a step um, to the side and away from the center, and then your other foot crosses in front. So you can see this right here. This left foot of Jordan is kind of away from the center of the circle. And then this foot is going to cross in front and be closer. And then if he were to want to continue uh, this ride, he would just rinse and repeat. So a larger side step and then crossing in front. And then this is normally the part where I would be like, Alicia, would you concur that Tori is the one stopping this ride? But I don't know if her ghostly presence will be able to concur that or not. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You can't see anything. So I'm just, you know, on autopilot. Uh <laughs> But like this is, uh, they could have kept this going if they wanted to. Um, so they just, but they made a choice mm -hmm. to end it early. Um, and I think in part, yeah. Tori was the one being like, eh, I think we're done with this now. Um, but Jordan was doing an amazing <laughs> job of keeping her frame as constant as possible. Um, and the mm -hmm. reason why I say it's her changing it is because of the way her right arm starts doing something new right here so she's the one who's changing her frame not him and then he's just calibrating to it and letting um his right arm go over her head you wouldn't for for the uh -huh. love of all that is good and holy as a leader if a follow is stretched away from you forward and their arms are kind of back behind them 
do not force their arms to change position. Because <laughs> uh, you can yeah. very easily. Um, uh, I don't know if you've said or not, but if you get into a position where you could possibly go into a ride and you start going into it and it doesn't feel quite right, I always just recommend to just like stop, like just keep your feet going. Um, don't try and keep going with the ride. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for adding that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got another uh, lean example here, um, but this one's a little bit more dynamic from Yakub and Emmeline. So this one is coming from a neck roll. And I just want to highlight that one of the reasons why this is possible is because Yakub is already providing a consistency of traveling around her with that side outside step and cross in front. If you just watch his footwork through here, side, cross in front, side, cross in front. So he's already providing that consistency. And then she's basically taking advantage of it. This is one of those examples where I believe Yakub is intending for it to be a ride. And that's why he's setting it up that way. Um, but because it's more of an open position, he doesn't um, have a standard like closed position connection with her back. Instead, his hands are uh, over the top of her shoulders. She has more wiggle room uh, to change what's <coughs> going on if she so chose. And the reason the riot is able to happen is because she basically commits to the same rate of rotation that he is doing around her axis. Because that's essentially what a ride is. So the person who's in the center, who is actually like more or less spinning on that foot, is going at the same speed as the person stepping around. If they were going different speeds, that just sounds like dangerous chaos. But um, for it to be a ride, they need to be going at the same rate. <laughs> All right, another example. This is another simple example. And this time we've got Ben and Melissa. And it's actually coming from a, a very similar kind of neck roll situation that we just saw with Yakub and Emmeline. But they are ending up in a one hand connection. So they both, Ben has his left hand free, Melissa has her right hand free. And she or he is connected to her with his right arm up and over uh, her left shoulder, upper arm area. And the reason why this one is working is because Ben is focusing on tethering the connection because it's really clear that Melissa wants to kind of delay her rotation particularly because of how much her upper body is rotated to the right and how she's delaying her left foot behind her. But again, if we're watching Ben, he's doing that same kind of side outside the circle and then cross in front situation. And while this ride only ends up being maybe one or just shy of one full rotation for Melissa, it's still a ride because their rate of rotation around her center axis is the same speed. So now before we start getting into the more complex examples of rides, I want to talk about the tension because I already talked about the, the direction of counterbalance, how we're operating not just in one direction in space for counterbalance, there's x-axis, there's y-axis, and then this one is the z-axis, right? 
And unlike tug of war, where you're all just yanking in one of two directions, it's basically along the X axis in a ride, there is energy usually along multiple axes. And so the tension that is happening, Ben is tethering her right shoulder, not just away. So if we think of a straight line um, from both of their uh, sternums to each other, it's not just that direction. We'll call that X for right now. So, so this direction. Um, but there is also tethering from this end of the slot to this end of the slot. So Ben is not trying to pull her shoulder to a point in space that's here. He is trying to send her shoulder out to where probably his uh, elbow is on the other side of his body that we can't see. So one more simple example before we move on to some <laughs> pretty spicy ones. So we've got Ben and Emmeline. This is actually an excellent example of a um, of variation in rate of rotation. So if we're going by the definition that I gave earlier, that a ride is where the rate of rotation is the same for the person in the middle of the ride versus the one traveling on the outside. The ride in this example starts about here. And you can actually see the way they're both like picking up and releasing their right feet is very similar. The only difference is Ben is going to travel further with it. So that's an indication of how in sync they are already. And then Ben starts rotating around her. And then by about here, it becomes really evident that she has been rotating faster than him. So now it's less of a ride and more of a tether. That might feel like splitting hairs, but this is the kind of thing to notice when you're trying to emulate something that you've seen and that you love and you want to practice it with someone or you want to learn it with a partner being able to see with your eye if the rate of rotation is the same or not between the two partners um, is a really crucial detail that can make or break your ability to successfully mimic the pattern. Now we've got Ben and Tori. And this is just a really classic example of a full on ride that keeps on going where the follow is the one experiencing the ride and the leader is the one just going around and around and around. I'm going to hold forward yet again so you can see it in one piece before we start breaking it down. Alrighty, so what is going on to make this ride happen? First of all, apparently Ben thinks he's going to space. I will say that. Mm -hmm. I, I love Ben so much. <sighs> the first thing I want to highlight for this one is the elevation changes. And not only is that like a musical choice, but if we go back to the beginning... I want you to see how Ben is actually using a level change to set Tori up for this ride. Um, oh, yes. Can I interject for Please do. Um, I was going to uh, compare that like initial level change to like the a roller coaster, like where you're going up and then when you drop everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. She cut out. Okay. The Phantom has given us a gift. Let's run with it. I think maybe what she was going for is uh, that initial up down is a really great way as a leader to help ground a follow onto one foot. So he's lifting her up as she's transitioning her weight onto her right foot. And he's keeping her forward over that right foot so she can't actually travel and step with that left foot. 
So that lift and drop is communicating to her to ground into the floor as opposed to triple around him. But like I've talked about earlier, it's dun, not dun, just the... Dun. Oh, hi. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Just what I was saying. I think so. Uh, I, I took that uh, as a, a, a grounding metaphor. Was that what you were going for? Grounding, but also like uh, speed wise, there's that build up and then the drop where everything kind of starts oh, moving. Oh, the acceleration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. I, yeah. I was close. I, I figured close. I'd just try and get that in and you can elaborate if possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will do. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to fold that in in a moment. So, um, so uh, Ben is not just doing the level change to prep her for this, but he is basically already starting to rotate around her. And then the element that Alicia just added is that's what's creating the, the speed changes through this. So we're getting some acceleration through the down and a bit of a deceleration through the up and an acceleration through the down and a deceleration through the up. Let me hold forward from the beginning again. All right, there's some more details to point out. So like I was talking about X, Y, Z axis, when you're counterbalancing someone and you're not the partner that's rotating on one foot, you're the person traveling around, it is your job to calibrate to where the energy is going. So when Tori is reacting to that downward lead, her energy is arcing down in this direction. And so what makes this complicated as someone who is counterbalancing that is you need to make sure that you are doing a similar thing, but equal and opposite. So if Tori is going that direction, Ben needs to be sending his energy that direction for it to genuinely counterbalance. And again, remember this is rotational. Oh man, can I, can I draw one of those things? It's like, no, no, I can't. That looks terrible. Ignore that. But the, in general, the point I am trying to make is that the angle of counterbalance through space has three dimensions to it and it's also arcing so it is dynamic through the whole ride if you are trying to remain completely static with your intention of direction as the person who's traveling around the person spinning if you're trying to remain static, the person spinning is going to feel like they're going to fall over. There needs to be um, directional intent um, and arcing to the counterbalance energy that you are giving. And the last thing I want to mention before we move on to the next example, because this is the sec the second or third time we've seen Ben doing a ride as a leader um, or the the follow Whoa. the pronouns tonight are hard okay ben is leading tori in a ride we've seen him do this a number of times already that's what i was trying to say i want everyone to pay attention to the relationship between where his chest is facing and his right arm so his right arm is out to his side to his right it is not in front of him like I was talking about in a previous example, whereas um, the person traveling around, if you try to close that, if you try to bring your left shoulder closer to your right hand while you're going around to follow, that's likely going to make the follow feel like they're going to fall over. So it is much easier and less work, uh, but also just like great technique as a leader to leave your right arm out to your side when you were leading a follow through a ride. 
All right. Because Ben and Tori apparently just love rides. We've got another example from them. And I love <laughs> this one so much because of the fake out one foot turns to begin with. So it's basically hip catches that Ben turns into a short ride at the end. So let's go through this a little bit slower. So he leads a free one foot. He makes sure to really get full contact. Like, so he's grabbing her back uh, when she's facing away from him. So that way he has plenty of time and connection to slow her down. And then he's sending her in the opposite direction and basically doing the same thing. But this time he is catching the back uh, with his right hand and the front of her hip with his left. And he's sending her around again. And then right here, this is where the magic happens. So because they're entering this ride from essentially a free spin, it is so, so important as a leader that you change as few variables as possible for your follow so they feel stable enough to continue being on one foot. He is instead inviting her to sink down and he is sending himself far enough away from her that she can sink into it. So you can see how far her body is behind her standing foot right here. And that is only because his energy is moving away and around her axis enough for her to be properly counterbalanced. And because she feels so stable in this connection, she's able to kind of ride the ride even further onto her weight transfer to her left foot because that's how stable Ben is making her feel. So one of the things that um, I see a lot in leaders who are starting to learn how to lead rides is a, a system that does not have any centripetal force whatsoever, where two things are rotating um, around a shared axis and trying to get away from each other, essentially because of that momentum. And instead, they try to just like <laughs> place the follow and like not have any momentum whatsoever and just try to magically go around them in such a way that they can just rotate them. But that is so much more work and there are so many more things that can go wrong. But if you let the away energy happen and you make sure that as the partner who is traveling around the person who's just rotating, that your away energy is enough to counterbalance the person in the middle to also give you away energy, but without actually going anywhere. And once you've achieved that, then you can sink into it more and you can get what we have right here from Tori, where she's completely off her axis, but that's because the connection is there for her to counterbalance her. They had to achieve a good ride first before sinking into it. That was a terrible sentence. I apologize in advance for that. Okay, now we've got a couple of super fancy examples from uh, Thibaut and Nicole. So for this one, we have a monkey bar entrance. And essentially, Nicole is delaying the monkey bar a little bit. So she's staying under his arm for longer. And she's really lunging down into her left leg and extending her right leg out behind her. 
And as you can see for part of the rotation, they are both moving at the same rate around the shared axis. And once again, we can see how Tebow's right arm is out to his side. It's not in front of him. And he's doing that kind of step cross, step cross around her axis. And then because she was accelerated into it, it stops being a ride right about here because they stop going at the same rate because uh, Nicole is going faster and she syncopates into another rotation and then this inhuman uh, round kick. <laughs> Nicole is inhuman. She is a magic incarnate. That is my opinion. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. All right, one more <laughs> example <laughs> from, from this same dance. And uh, this is an example of a ride from an actual one-footed turn and then uh, more advanced shenanigans afterwards. Advanced isn't advanced enough of a word in this context when it's Tebow and Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> so she's prepping for a fuete. And then what Tebow does because she's like using his side to help prep this turn for herself. He ends up taking that hand in order to follow through over the top. And then as she completes the first rotation, he lets go of their right to right handhold that they had had before. And he once again goes for kind of like a monkey bar connection right here. And as she ducks under it, he starts doing that side cross, side cross footwork and counterbalancing her in a ride. And what I love about this particular example um, is unlike the ones that we've been seeing before, he's really actually is shaping his front. <laughs> okay, Aaron shared in the chat something beautiful. Quote, I believe you mean to say colon absolutely nuts equals advance for Tebow and Nicole. End quote. I, I love it. Yes, it is nuts, but I will, I will, I will snack on those until my tummy hurts. Oh no, it lost our ghost again. Hopefully she'll be back soon. So anyways, what I was saying about Tebow, because he has both of his hands on her frame, over the tops of her upper arms, he has to face her with his upper body. He wouldn't be able to just be um, like he was in this example where his right arm is off to his side. In this example, he has to face her more. So I want you to pay attention to his footwork, but also how much space he's creating with his upper body. So he is moving in this direction, but there's actually just a little bit more here, and that's what is counterbalancing her leg. So there's not just counterbalance in this direction, but there's also counterbalance in this direction. I know I just repeated myself, but emphasis is important for this. As the experience I've had as a follow uh, with leaders who are newer to dancing rides is I have intention to be counterbalanced, but that doesn't mean I am throwing myself off my center. It means I am ready and intending to sink into the connection, but I can't do that unless the leader is creating space for that counterbalance on their own or the person that's going around and traveling around instead of the person in the center. So this moment right here where Nicole is finishing uh, her hair whip coming out of that neck roll, you can see how she is starting to pitch away from him but she isn't able to start coming off of her axis a little bit 
until he is counterbalancing it on the other end. Otherwise, she would take them both down. So it almost becomes like a chicken or the egg problem sometimes. And it's really important that the person that is traveling around is creating that away energy in the XYZ axis that's appropriate for what's happening in the center. Um, and it's arcing appropriately. Now, our last example for the night is the why not both. And once again, we have Ben and Tori. And this is an example of she goes and then he goes. <laughs> so the ride starts here after she finishes this rotation to her right. And he starts slowing her down just a little bit to get that connection on her back. And then he starts traveling around her. And then what he does is he now needs to set himself up for a ride, which means leading her to start traveling around him. So like we saw in that example earlier tonight, is he then takes this ride energy and he actually leads her off of her ride axis on her right foot. So she does a weight transfer on her left. And it's a very rotational thing. So she ends up bringing her right foot across. And then that's when he's able to do his ride because he's already set her up to travel around him. Ta-da! But to summarize for tonight, a ride is essentially where um, both partners are sharing a center axis and one of the partners is literally on that center axis rotating um, and the other person is traveling around them, but they're moving at the same rate around that center axis. And the person that's doing all of the traveling, the side cross, side cross, side cross, is the one that is responsible for the majority of the calibration in order for the person who is likely on one foot to have as few variables changed as possible so they can feel stable. And yeah, so hopefully tonight has unlocked some powers of vision for y'all um, when you're looking at rides uh, from your favorite dancers so you can see some details that maybe you didn't see before. One big announcement for tonight. It is official. Alicia and I are going to be hosting the Breakfast with Champions at Swingcouver New Year's 2022-23. And we're really excited. Um, and we are going to start collecting questions that people want to ask of the champions. Because um, we're going to do a bit of a curated Q&A. So if you have a question for the champions, please share them um, in the comments below the recording of this YouTube video, and we will start gathering them and curating um, our final list uh, for Swingcouver. We're really excited. We're really grateful that uh, Sarah has asked us to do this. It's going to be absolutely incredible to ring in the new year with everyone that way. So yeah, looking forward to that. Otherwise, uh we shall return and hopefully uh alicia will be corporal this next time instead of just <laughs> <random>. um <laughs> uh and we're also happy to do a rides a part two for when uh alicia has has internet again so if anybody watching this has questions uh yeah. about rides <laughs> Um, feel free to also drop those in the chat and we can always do another episode in the future on rides answering those questions. So thank you all so much for joining me and my yeah. ghostly apparition partner. We shall catch you all later. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> all I heard was rotating partner's rotation. <laughs> I, I, I'm in the midst of defining a ride. Um, so that definition will become ah. a little bit more clear, uh, before, when we jump into the screen share. Um, while we have you, was there any preamble you wanted to attempt to share on rides? No. no? Okay. It's not going to go. It's not going to go well. Okay. If you were to take this shape and rotate it from a bird's eye view through this center, 
you would get um yeah no the words just aren't coming if i uh, i will probably try to go find an image on google image for the recording <laughs> so <you can> <laughs> um but essentially sorry point, i can't help you i have no clue what it's you're okay. saying okay <laughs> i this is this is remember when i said working from bread the other day instead of working from bed um I've had less than one brain cell all week. It's been quite impressive that I have not died. So um, good times. <laughs>